Radha Krishna Foundation presents Samarpan, an offering of service. Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki Jai Guru Rabrahama Guru Vishnu Guru Deva Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Ganesha Yanama Sri Saraswataya Nama Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Yakunde Shubrava Sravrita Yavina Varadanda Mandita Kara Yashveta Padama Sana Yabrahama Chuta Sankar Prabhete Bir Devai Sadavan Deta Samam Patu Saraswati Bhagavati Nishesha Jadya Paha Sarveshwari Jagadishwari Sarveshwari Jagadishwari to everybody as most of you know that in a few days we'll be celebrating Saraswati Jayanti which we also call Vasan Panchami it's the planting of Holika Saraswati Jayanti which is a celebration of the goddess of learning 
And this represents another indication of the dynamism of Hinduism, whereby however and whatever lens through which you see the world, there's a representation of God for you to follow, to to embrace and to move forward spiritually. And so Saraswati Jayanti is one of those occasions where this aspect of God encourages learning. Why is it that we encourage learning in Sanatan Dharm? This slok tells us why. Navatri bhajam na chabhar kari Vyayekrite varrata eva nityam Vidyadhanam sarvadana pradhanam This is Subhashitam. It says here the first words, if you listen to the words carefully, Nachori Hariam. We encourage learning and edu in the pursuit of education. Why? Because it gives any person a sense of independence, a sense of confidence. Why? Nachori Hariam, because when one educates oneself, then this is something that cannot be taken away from you. Nacharaja Hariam, if you live in a place where your possessions can be uh, taken away by authorities, Raja Haryam means it cannot be taken away by, by kings, Raj, by the president, but by anyone in authority. Nabhatri Bhajam, you were born in a home with you know, many siblings and one of the siblings is doing better, let's, let's assume financially, and so the parents say that you know, the other siblings are struggling, and so what you should do is that you should share your wealth amongst the other ones. Well, that is not something that's applicable to your education. That, now, Bhatri Bhajam, Bhatri here means, means brothers. Essentially, it means it cannot be divided among siblings. It cannot be divided among, among your brothers. Yet another example as to why this education that we have, or the pursuit of learning and whatever we register in our heads cannot be taken away from us. Nachabharakari, even though it is so powerful, it causes no weight upon our shoulder. Nachabharakari. However, Bhaye Krite Vardate Eva Nityam, this slok tells us that the beauty with this, with all those beautiful qualities, yet another one that if it is spent, unlike material wealth, when this is spent, it keeps growing. Vidyadhanam Sarvadhanam Pradhanam, that the wealth of knowledge is the most superior wealth of all. And so in Sanatan Dharma, there are many, many slokas and verses and the scriptures to help us to follow, to pursue education relentlessly because of those beautiful aforementioned qualities. Here's another slope. <laughs> This is Manu Smriti 5, 109th verse. It says here, Advirgatrani Shudyanti, that when we want to purify the body, we use water, because water purifies the body. Mana Satyena Shudyati, the truth purifies the mind. Vidya tapobhyam bhutatma. That when we do tap, tapaha or austerity, spiritual practice, this purifies the soul. It says in the last part of the verse, buddhir gyanena shudyati. What purifies the intellect? Buddhir gyanena shudyati. That, that only learning purifies the intellect. Like I said before, there are many verses. We'll go through a few of them very quickly. This 
says niti shatakam shastra it says vimukta sarva pape bhyah that there are things we should do as a student to ensure that we become successful the verse says that we say we stay sin free sin free here means vimukta sarva pape bhyo means to do things that that's not going to cause us any trouble in our path so a few of those things are mentioned in this in this verse the first one says lagwa hara lagwa hara here means literally means to be a small eater what does it say that if you remember bhagavad gita verse verse 16 of chapter 6 bhagwan is telling arjun that those who eat too much or eat too little those who sleep too much or sleep too little cannot be successful in life that is why the verse here is saying in drawing the attention of children that when you're studying you should eat properly eat all the correct things why because when you're putting in so much energy to study then of course you need you know your, your all your vitamins to be in place your d3s and your b12s that you need for concentration and for for brain power etc also what you eat as a child would affect your eating habits later in life so there are many many reasons why we should ensure we follow the scriptures when it comes to learning there there are things here in the scriptures that would help us to be successful not only as an individual in life but in pursuing our education the other point here in this verse is jitendriya that jite Jitendra means a person who has control or, or of his or her senses a master of his senses what does that mean it means that when when you're focusing and pursuing education then we would have to give up some other things the not everything we see another youth is doing probably that youth has finished school or another person that we want to do we don't have to you know go to every sporting event we don't have to go to every party we don't have to do all the things that we see other people doing because our focus is elsewhere our focus is to consume to the best of our ability what is taught in school and what we read in our books so jitendra means that you'd have to suppress some of these callings that you may have from any of the five senses the last part of the verse says and you have to be atma yukta atma yukta means to be fully engaged in your learning with all your senses with the mind and the intellect not just with the ears and the eyes but the mind has to be absorbed and the intellect will help you why why does it say atma yukta atma here means soul because from soul which is purity comes from paramatma then after soul in the ladder there's 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 intellect after intellect coming down then there is mind after mind then there is the, the senses so whatever the intellect says the mind the intellect can give uh, instructions to the mind and of course the mind will give instructions to the to the senses and so if we have a purified intellect if we take purity from atma atma yukta and we yoke everything else the intellect the mind the senses with, with the message that is given that is given to us by that source of purity then of course we'll be successful but we have to have control this is why einstein says that education is not the learning of facts but a training of the mind to think we have to think as to how we can be successful even in learning so what you have to do as children is keep your thinking caps on and don't get caught up in the in the web of these vices that you see around you every there are six things that you know any human being can get caught up with especially children we have to be careful it it is it is called the the shatta dosha the six mental afflictions the first one we mentioned already first one is nidra sleep bhagavad gita reminds us that as a child studying we have to get adequate sleep but we cannot sleep too much because you'll sleep the the time away that you need to study most children would like to you know would study into the night and you know wake up late in the morning it is very very unusual for only a small percentage of people wake up early in the morning to study at 4 o'clock in the brahma hood 2 hours before sunrise 
this is not something that this is something that hinduism has been saying for a long time but now it's proven scientifically as well that that's when the brain functions the best two hours before sunrise whatever you read for three hours during the day you can read and consume in one hour in brahma muhurt however take that into consideration use it if you can but the first one is sleep we have to have control of our sleep second one is tandra nidra tandra means mental sluggishness sometimes you get tired to think that happens when you study a lot so you have to know what to do maybe wake up early in the morning to study if you're going to get mentally tired so the third one krodha literally means anger why we shouldn't get angry when we're studying because it impairs our judgment in critical decisions mostly theoretical decisions when we're going to school then the other one the fourth one is alasyam alasyam here means physical laziness remember tandra was mental sluggishness and this is physical laziness this can also be a result of you know improper eating improper sleep and so you become lazy or you're leaving the studying for tomorrow all studies show that if we want to improve our brain function there are a few things we can do and one of those things is to move a little bit you know to do exercise you know most children think that we don't have to do that because you can just be a couch potato and you can consume the books 24 hours a day and you'll be fine at some point in time you'll need a little jump start and so studies have shown that when the body moves the brain grooves that you become smarter it becomes more powerful it absorbs better and quicker the latest the latest book by you know dr sanjay gupta book called stay sharp and he emphasizes on the need to exercise to do physical exercise a little bit of aerobics if you if you want to help the brain to function better the fifth one is is bhayam it's fear when you're going to school and exam is coming up you're thinking would i be able to pass this or not you have a fear bhayam means fear and in this case it can be fear of failure the one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve is the fear of failure what we have to do what you have to do as children as, as you know students is that whatever energy you spend on being fearful transfer that energy or that time into studying and so you'll go from fear to confidence and so the last one is dhirga sutrakam dhirga sutrakam means procrastination essentially in one word and we all know procrastination is a thief of time so don't leave it for tomorrow when you have studying to do get it done tomorrow you can learn something new so if we implement these four aforementioned points that we talked about before in the slok then here's the last line in the slok you know the six points we just mentioned you know that as a support to our slok so the last line in the slok says param buddhim labate papa nashine that if we complete these four param buddhim labate papa nashine means a destruction of all that is not good for you param buddhim you would be able to attain spiritual intelligence this is why martin luther king says that intelligence plus character is the true goal of education so when you're taking education the, the the goal is to not only become intelligent but for that intelligence to lead the proper behavior to have proper character and for the parents who are listening you know we also have a role to play in the children's education not something that i'm assuming but chanakya maharaj tells us of that role that we have to play mata shatru pita vairi yena valo na patitha na shobhate shubha madhye hansa madhye vako yata hansa madhye vako yata hansa madhye vako yata mata shatru 
पिता बाईरी इसेंशियल इट मीन्स दोज पेरेंट्स हु डोंट प्ले देयर पार्ट फुलफिलिंग देयर रोल इन द एजुकेशन ऑफ द चिल्ड्रेन दोज पेरेंट्स आर एनिमीज टू देयर चिल्ड्रेन बट द चिल्ड्रेन ऑल्सो हैव टू रियलाइज इट वाइल पेरेंट्स हेल्प इन इन you know with the domestic and the economic necessities of the pursuit of your education that your contribution is to give it your best shot is to study hard and the reason why we're celebrating saraswati jayanti is that you study hard and you seek the blessings of mata saraswati who is the goddess of learning most of us know how to do that we know the shloka is very popular saraswati namastubyam varade kam rupinim vidyarambham karishyami sidhir bhavatu me sada we encourage our children to say this every morning when they're going to school or before embarking upon any task and saraswati namastubyam as we are going to embark on my studies here he mother saraswati this morning your birthday come up in that you're the giver of boons in this case i'm seeking the boon of being able to absorb what i'm studying what i'm learning today vidyaram mam karishyami whenever i approach my pursuits of learning siddhir bhav to me sir please bestow upon me optimal learning capacity this is a prayer to mother mata saraswati we should all use every day especially children there is something we also need to remember that if we do this and you know you have your first degree and you go like okay that's the end of it now no if if education is learning is available to you whatever you do in life then pursue it because there are three things in life that we should always be content with and there are three things in life that we should never be content with Chanakya Maharaj again tells us of these Santosha Trishu Kartavya Swadhare Dhan Bhojane Trishu Chaivan Kartavya Adhyayane Japdanayo Adhyayane Japdanayo चाणक्य महाराज मस्ट बी कंटेंट विद दीज थ्री थिंग्स वन संतोष त्रिशु कर्तव्य स्वधारे धन भोजन इज सो थ्री थिंग्स अ पर्सन मस्ट ऑलवेज बी कंटेंट विद इज हिज ओन स्पाउस हिज ओन वेल्थ एंड हिज ओन फूड त्रिशूर चाइव कर्तव्य अध्ययन जपदान योह सो जपदान योह मीन्स जप मीन्स मेडिटेशन देर थ्री थिंग्स एट वी शुड नेवर एवर बी कंटेंट विथ अकॉर्डिंग टू चाणक्य महाराज एंड द फर्स्ट वन इज जप योर मेडिटेशन योर साधना योर प्रेयर्स दे मस्ट नेवर बी अ टाइम वेन यू से अफ डन इनफ दान मीन्स चैरिटी वॉर एवर चैरिटी यूर एबल टू गिव फ्रॉम योर possessions your wealth there should never be a time when you you should say that i've done enough in my life as long as you're able to earn you should always be willing to give japadana yo and the last one here is adhyayana adhyayana according to the verse the pursuit of learning going after education this is why gandhi says it live as though you were to die tomorrow but learn as if you were to live forever to help us do that there's a saraswati ashtakam there's a common last line in all the prayers and all the set of eight prayers there's a common last line this is how it goes sringakshma brin nivase शुक मुक मुनि भी सेव्य मनांगि पद्मे स्वांगक्षाया विदुता मृत कर सुर राध वाहने वक्षवित्री शंभु श्रीनाथ मुखया 
मरवर निकर रमोदता पूज माने विद्या सुधा च बुद्धि कमलजदयते सत्वर दे मह्यम विद्या सुधा च बुद्धि कमलजदयते सत्वर दे मह्यम विद्या हेर मीन्स नॉलेज Shuddhamcha buddhi means a cleansing of the intellect, a sharp, a clear intellect. Kamala jadaite, this ashtakam is, a, is actually called Kamala jadaite ashtakam. <laughs> Meaning that ashtakam in the set of eight prayers, Kamala jaha means Saraswati. In short, why? Because the spouse of the one who was born of the Kamal flower, the lotus flower, Brahma ji, is born of the lotus flower and the spouse of brahma maha saraswati so kamala jadaite daite means spouse just for information sake so kamala jadaite satvaram means very quickly dehi mahyam ya to saraswati bless me very quickly with vidyam shudham cha buddhim with a cleansing of my intellect with an intellect that's so strong and powerful and they can absorb any anything and everything that i set my mind to learn so here your sincere prayer to the goddess of learning if you were to pray to maharas mahasaraswati in combination with a diligent effort from your part in your studies will secure you a seat at the table of success especially in the field of intelligence again happy saraswati jayanti to all of you and i wish you all he sharade ma he sharade ma agyanata se hame tar de ma शार दे हे शार दे